Welcome to Space Flight Scotland and today we'll be looking at two new planned Scottish spaceports and some amazing images from astrophotographer Gemma Hudson. But before that, let's have an update on what's happened this week in the Scottish space industry. The Supreme Courts of Scotland rejected all points of a case made by three people, including fashion chain billionaire Anders Povelson, against the planning of Space Hub Sutherland. The Danish billionaire allegedly owns more land in Scotland than Her Majesty the Queen and the Church of Scotland combined. The protests were raised on environmental concerns and an alleged weak business plan. Mr Povelson, unsurprisingly, owns land adjacent to the proposed Sutherland Space Hub. However, as reported on many news sources, investment company Wild Ventures Limited, which is owned by Mr. Povelson, last year invested an undisclosed sum, suspected to be over £1 million, into the Saxa Vord spaceport in Shetland. Now, as always, this information is taken from different news sources, and I take things that I read online with a massive pinch of salt. And you should too. That being said, I'm unbelievably happy that Space Hub Sutherland has a green light to proceed. And as for the environmental concerns, I'm no expert, but I do know that surveys have been done by environmental professionals. And the plan has always been for Space Hub Sutherland to be built respectfully and to reinvest into the peat bogs and the wetlands which just shows they mean to do their best. I want all Scottish spaceports to succeed. It's good for us all. Also this week, English-based firm Gravit Lab Aerospace launched their Ada rocket from the site of the upcoming Spaceport 1 in the Outer Hebrides. I cover the site in my previous video, so please remember to go back and have a look later. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Now the rocket is named Ada, after the 19th century mathematician Lady Ada Lovelace, who is regarded as the world's first computer programmer. Gravit Lab planned to provide microgravity and research services, and Spaceport One will be an ideal location to launch this type of rocket. We wish Gravit Lab Aerospace all the luck in their future research and launches. Liking the channel so far? I'd like to make it even better, but I need your help. Join our Patreon page and help me grow the channel. Every member will have their name shown at the end of every video for as long as your membership. And those in the highest tier will help choose which spaceports I go to in the future. If you can't join at this time, then please like, subscribe and share this video as even that will help the channel grow. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, we'll be looking at two more Scottish spaceports. These are the final two that we know of that are planned at this time. They are Presswick Spaceport, based at Glasgow Presswick Airport, and the second is based at the former RAF Macrahanish base, which now goes by the name of Campbelltown Airport, and that's located in Argyll, in the southwest of Scotland. These two spaceports are different to the other planned Scottish spaceports in that they are for horizontal launches, much like Cornwall Spaceport in England. These will require aircraft to launch from a runway and be able to launch the rocket once at a certain height. For those of you that have seen Virgin Orbit launch the rockets, this is what will happen. The Campbelltown Airport has one of the longest runways in Europe at 3,049 feet and was constructed during the Cold War for heavy military aircraft. Ahead of the launch of the NASA Space Shuttle in 1981, RAF Makrahanish was a certified emergency landing site with the runway long enough to welcome the shuttle and get it airborne again. I'm glad the shuttle never needed to do an emergency landing in Scotland but what a sight that would have been. Presswick Spaceport is a different matter, as it's already a large operational airport. 
Presswick Spaceport claim that much of the infrastructure is already in place, including the long runway, easy accessibility and cargo handling infrastructure. In addition to the launch of satellites, proposed future uses include microgravity flights, hypersonic flight services and even space tourism human spaceflight. Now this is the first time that I've seen the words human space flight in any information for Scottish spaceports. This would be ideal for Virgin Galactic flights given their horizontal takeoff and landing techniques. Now as I said earlier, we have a number of images taken from the Twitter account of Gemma Hudson and these images are simply stunning. Gemma is outside most nights, weather depending of course, to bring these amazing images to us. If you aren't following Gemma, then please do so on Twitter, at Quantum Meteor. Keep up the great work Gemma, and wrap up warm when you're out there. So as you can see, things are happening quite quickly now in the Scottish space industry. And it's new to us, so we're very excited. But plans can change. So please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell down there, and I will keep you updated as soon as something new changes. Or follow me on Twitter. I'll put a link to that below as well. Finally, I want to thank Gemma for the use of her images. They're fantastic. Keep up the great work, Gemma. And I will see you all next time.